The following is a hoop ball presentation. It is the hoop ball Clippers podcast. Brandon Marcus here. Hope you're having a fantastic start to your day wherever you are. We're recording this on a Friday morning. Really have no idea what day it is nowadays. It's just one of those <laughs> things where you just go with the flow. And so much so that normally I get my intro and I have like a three or four minute spiel. But no, we're going straight into the podcast this time around. We have Chris Merch joining us once again on the Hoop Ball Clippers podcast. Chris, what's going on, man? Hey, Brandon. Thanks for having me again, man. Uh, not much. You know, yeah, I'm losing days myself and uh, drinking a few more beers than, than normal to, to stimulate myself. But hey, man, I'm, I'm happy ball is coming back and happy to be here. So you are on Twitter, was it underscore Chris Merch? Is that what it is? Yeah, you know, I, I think I told you this last time you motivated me to change my my music and basketball writing handles. So yeah, underscore Chris Merch. Yeah, it's never good when you call someone Nigel and that's not actually their name. <laughs> yeah. Because it's Nigel Roxbury, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so Chris Merch, Nigel Roxbury, two different people even though you might think they're the same. But they, they are the same. It's just two different people <laughs> and different personas. Either way, yeah. you have come here to hear about basketball, so we are going to talk basketball. And a couple of things have come down today, perfectly enough for us to discuss. And first, Chris, I want to discuss your thoughts on this. There has been a report that has come out that supposedly this bubble that is coming um, to Orlando – where all the players are going to be sequestered, 22 teams are not allowed to leave this bubble, family members are supposedly not able to come until the second round. Well, that bubble apparently is not much of a bubble because Tom, ha Tom Haberstrom came out today, or Tom Haberstrow, pardon me, came out today and said a key component of the NBA restart plans as cases surge in surrounding area is that the Disney support staff, as of now, will not be subject to NBA's bubble protocols with daily testing and quarantine. They are free to go in and out of campus per a Disney Union official. Now, my first thought is, that is a horrendous idea, because A, Orange County, Florida is blowing up in terms of the number of cases. B, all it takes, we see in the nursing homes, is for someone like the cook to go out and get coronavirus, and then bring it into the nursing home, and everyone gets it. So my first thought is, awful idea, and a player like J.J. Redick has already come out and said, okay, so it's not really a bubble. What are your thoughts? Um, obviously, the worst-case scenario when it comes to the NBA restart would be uh, a, a top player, or really any player, anybody getting sick, right? So that was the, the purpose of this bubble, and if you have people in South Florida going out and, and and living their normal lives, you know, potentially not wearing masks. We're, we we don't know what these people do outside of work. You are potentially harming everyone, right? And if there is another league shutdown, that's that's going to be bad. And look, I want basketball back as much as anyone, but it's all about the safety of the humans involved with this, you know, this restart project. Um, I, I think that the the Disney bubble is a good idea, right? But if you aren't being as safe as possible with testing, with masks, with keeping everyone sequestered in one spot and making sure everyone doesn't leave, then it's not going to work, right? If a Disney worker infects anyone, uh, any surface, it's, it's going to be, a, it's, yeah, it's just not going to work. Here's the question then, Chris, what do they do? Because the Disney officials have family as well, and they're not being paid the amount of money these NBA players are being paid to go and be at Disney World for three months and play basketball. Let's also remember that it's not going to be 22 teams the entire time. I mean, they're going to whittle it down to 16, and then after the first round, they'll whittle it down even more. So by the first month and a half or so, I think they'll probably get rid of about 13 teams, um, if I'm doing my math correctly. And so if that's the case, then the NBA is doing what they can with the players. But do you have it now where you say, all right, these Disney officials are going to be in this complex for maybe a week at a time, and they have to get tested beforehand. They have to live in the complex at Disney World for a week, and then they can go and go home to their families for a week, and the next people take their shift. Is that the way to do it? Because I think that's the only thing that makes a lot of sense to me if these officials from Disney want to come and go. 
Yeah, pretty much exactly what you said. I think staggering employees um, is the best way to do it. You don't have, you know, hundreds of employees all there in the bubble at the same time to where they can't leave. Yeah, you got to stagger it maybe 20% at a time, right? And as you said, the less teams, the less need for workers, but also the need for for potentially new workers. Because you're right, these 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 people aren't getting paid enough. And and that would be an idea as well is, is for Disney and MBA to have a reserved, fu- a reserved fund for these people to get paid more. Because what they're doing is putting their lives at risk and not being able to see their families. NBA players are used to not seeing their families, right? Um, daily Disney workers are not. And maybe they have a sick relative. Maybe they live with their mom, uh, you know, immunocompromised people. So being safe, having the staggered employee rate, um, having that rate go down as the teams go down and, and really securing them firmly in the bubble for the amount of time that they're there has to be the case. Because now they're essential workers. I mean, you talk about the grocery store employees and you talk about all the people that are going to work and haven't left work, whether it's someone in a hospital or it's someone in a grocery store. These people are now essential workers. They're being asked mm-hmm. to come to the complex and work in order to get the MBA season going. And for sure, that's not fair to them because they didn't ask for this. But at the same time, like you said, if there's an incentive for them to maybe make some more money, like some grocery stores gave an extra $2 an hour or so to their employees, then it does make sense. And you bring up a really good point. With the NBA players, they are used to going on these seven-game, 11-day road trips. They're used to being gone for more than a week or two at a time. Whereas these employees are used to going home to their families every night. They're not used to staying at a hotel and being away from their family. So there has to be some sort of incentive for them and also some protocols for them to stay safe. Because like you said, the one thing that is the craziest part about all this, I mean, there's obviously so much craziness when it comes, to this, crazy, yeah. when it comes to this virus mm-hmm. is that you know what you can control. You can't control anybody else. So you could say, yeah, I'm going to go see my friend. But at the same time, you don't know who your friend has seen. You don't know if your friend is washing their hands after they touch a doorknob. You know that you're doing that, but you don't know if your friend is. And that's why it's tough when you bring in somebody from Disney World that goes home and comes back and goes home and comes back. You're just endangering these players. I don't think it'll work. No, uh, I don't think it'll work at all. It has to be a bubble. JJ Reddick's concern is is absolutely correct. Um, I, I don't see any other way that this works. And if a player gets sick, they are going to shut this whole thing down and we're going to miss the playoffs, the finals. There will be no more basketball. So this has to be very secure. And I know the NBA is trying their best to do that, but that idea of having workers leave and come back just can't happen, it, essentially. It really sounds like it was floated out today. Like, hey, let's see what people think about this idea because – They couldn't in their minds with how well Adam Silver has handled this. They couldn't really think in their minds, you know what? It's a great idea to go ahead and have these people coming and going. It really is a good idea. There's no way that they could rationally think that makes sense, right? No, no shot. And I mean, look, the Disney and ABC and the NBA, they all have a lot of money. I know that the league has been shut down for three months. It it will be, I think, three and a half or four months by the time it starts. They have the money to pay these people more, have a reserve fund, pay them more. You know, yes, it's it stinks that they won't be able to see their family for, you know, upwards of seven days if they do stagger it, which I think is the best idea. But, you know, granted, if you are getting paid more, if there is an incentive, I think it makes a little bit more sense. Let's talk about the other topic that has come up today. And Chris Haynes reported that significant number of players are disappointed their voice was not heard in the decision to restart the season. And others believe black players sequestered to entertain and ease the league's economic burden amid racial tension is bad optics. There's a lot to unpack here. It is obvious what is going on right now in our country when it comes to Black Lives Matter. It is obvious that this coronavirus is affecting people of color more so than white people. So this is something that's a very valid concern. And frankly, Chris, this was something that everyone was worried about initially, was the safety of the players, and does everybody have a voice, or is it just the star players? What are your thoughts on this report? Everyone has a voice. Um, I'm not even sure if like myself speaking on this, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, sound educated on the topic. And I've been, 
you know, my, as for myself, I've been going to protests. I've been, you know, spreading throughout social media. Right. But when you are silencing these players and putting them in an area where they can't interact, where they can't go to protests, um, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't look good a on on really anyone especially the league um because everything's you know money driven and the return of the league is obviously money driven they're going to lose so much money if they can't do the playoffs right but these players are humans and this is a majority black league right and and the players have been steadfast in protesting and being out there and, and spreading awareness already we've seen that and it's been powerful it's been awesome um but when you take that away, when you take that power away and they and their only voice is maybe a post game interview six feet away or social media, um, it, 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 it is bad optics, especially in, in the time that we are in. I don't know if the NBA is going to institute like, I, you know, I, I think that they're going to allow the players to be interviewed and, and speak on things during games because the NBA has great PR and they're and they're fantastic in their social awareness. So I, I hope that they give players platforms while this is going on. However, not being near their family, not being in their uh, communities, helping out, right? That's unfortunate. So I don't really know if I have like a distinct answer. I just know that obviously this decision that the players want to play, but they also want to advocate for themselves and their communities and, you know, the, 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 the like the, uh, the POC community, sorry, the the yeah. people of color community, yeah. um, and they're and they're they're probably not going to be able to do that to the best of uh, to the extent that they would want to, right? But it, it's just a hard question. I don't really know how to answer it. To be completely honest with you, no. And what's interesting is that you actually attacked part of it that I wasn't even thinking of. I, I wasn't even thinking about the having their voices heard in that regard. It, it was more of the the p- part that I saw was the actual hey, everybody isn't apparently getting a vote. It was the owners that had the vote to go ahead with this season. And Michelle Roberts with Chris Paul and the rest of the Players Association that kind of went forward with the idea. I don't believe every player had a say. I know gotcha. there, there, there was some leaks initial, initially that said that there was a text sent from Michelle Roberts, I believe, to every player saying, would you be com- comfortable playing yes or no? It was just a simple yes or no question. And... So that's the other part of it that you, when you talk about players having a voice, but then you get to the other part. And like I said, this is so complex and it's the, Hey, why are we the ones coming back right now? Why is it that I can't go back to work right now? Because I was furloughed. Why is it that I can't go back to work, but they're allowed to go back to work and they're making way more money than me. And maybe they don't make, they don't need that money. That's what some people are thinking at home is saying, why is it that I was unemployed? Why is it that I can't go back to work? Why is it that I can't go and see my family for whatever state you're in where there's still that shelter in place, but these guys are going to play. And really the answer is simple, Chris, it's money. I mean, it's the same yeah. reason why Disney World is going to same reason Disney World is going to open. Same reason why Disneyland is going to open. It's the same reason why the Premier League is going to come back next week. It's the same mm-hmm. reason why the championship is going to come back a week from Saturday. It's about money for these organizations, and that is really what trumps all. And it is unfortunate, but really, it is the reality that we live in. Yeah, um, and I mean, concerning the the player vote. Right. I guess I'm not I'm not disappointed that they only ask top players. Right. Especially Chris Paul being the president of the Players Association. Um, He's in that position to have the to to be the voice of the players. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, it goes back to what you just said. Money. Um, you know, asking, you know, speaking of Clippers, Joe Kim Noah, if he wants to play, right, who's never even put on a Clippers jersey. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I texting him or, or even asking the question would have been OK, but he's not going to drive viewership for these games. Right. So you got to You got to I think asking the top players was 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 fine. You can't. And, and, you know, based on majority rule. And there was also that that news um, piece that came out. I believe a month and a half ago or two months um, where there was a conference call with all the top players and Adam Silver, and they were adamant that they wanted to continue. 
right? And and these players, you know, um, the the tenth, eleventh, twelfth man on these rosters has to know that the top players run everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I don't. I know that maybe some of them were were a little angry at it, and it's not an ideal situation. But if you want a chance for your team to compete for a championship, which I would hope every player would want, and you have the ability to play and potentially be and and be safe. I, you know, I think go for it. And I had no qualms with asking the top players, but yes, it's a complete money decision. Let's attack the other part of this that was brought up yesterday. I believe it was where there's concerns. There's a group of players that have concerns about their safety and supposedly they'll be given the okay to not play in Orlando if they choose. And there will instead be this couple of players, I believe the, it'll be 17 players on a roster that's going to be allowed as opposed to the normal 15, I think it is. Okay. So mm-hmm. they're talking about adding more players and that some players, if they don't want to play, they don't need to. And the likes of a Jamal Crawford, for example, will be eligible, I believe, to play in this Orlando environment. What are your thoughts on players, first of all, players not playing, and second of all, bringing in these quote unquote replacement players. Um, I'm very pro player choice over the, um, the NBA. Um, I, I think safety first at, yeah. at all times, especially when it comes to uh, a life and death situation like coronavirus. We've already seen many, many players get it. And while thankfully a lot of them are healthy, some may be more immunocompromised, may have asthma, uh, pre-existing conditions. Safety first, one hundred percent. So, players' decision if they don't want to play, that's fine. And I actually, and I really enjoy the the other part of it, right? The the getting twenty players on a roster, getting the the G leaguers, getting guys like Jamal Crawford, Nate Robinson, even you know, just whoever like still wants to play, mm-hmm. right? Because for them, very cool experience to be in a playoff situation, even though kind of a weird playoff situation, but still be able to be on the bench, potentially even make an impact. Um, you know, it'd be cool to see a guy like Amir Coffey who wouldn't be on the playoff roster, mm-hmm. um, you know, potentially scoring 10 points in a Western Conference Ooh. final game if, if some of the Clippers don't want to play, right? Yeah. So, it, you know, it, it's a cool experience for them. It's good for the teams to have these reserve players. It's good on the players to be safe and make that conscious decision if they don't want to play. I'm, I'm all for all three of, of these of these situations. Yeah, it, it's such an – I mean, it's so complex. There's mm-hmm. no other way to describe it. It's really complicated, and frankly, it's tough to figure out what is the best way to do this. You know, there are – it's – Someone's going to be upset no matter what you do. I mean, you can look at any aspect of life right now, and someone is going to be upset, whether it's – don't want to get political, but I'm just going to bring up some examples. People say to fund the police. Some people say give them less. Some people say completely get rid of them. ABC comes out today with their bachelor. is It's the first black bachelor. Some people are saying, well, of course they did that. It's like, okay, well, do you prefer the alternative where they don't do that? I mean, it really is a no-win situation for some of these decision makers. And in this mm-hmm. regard, the NBA is something that a lot of people love. The NFL is something a lot of people love. And People want to see their teams play. Clippers fans want to see Paul George and Kawhi Leonard get a chance to go for the NBA title. There is no doubt in my mind that Kawhi and PG will play out the four years of their contract. They will opt in for the final two years in my mind, especially after all this and how important it is for to be near family. So I mm-hmm. think that's going to be something where we don't need to worry about that. And it's not going to be you just threw away all of your draft picks for one year of these guys, if the season does get canceled. But that brings me to my question to you. Does this season finish? That's my question. Do you think this season will finish, given the stuff that just came out about players not happy that they're being forced to play, and the fact that this bubble may not be as much of a bubble as they're saying? So if the answer is no to the bubble and the players uh, refuse to play, then no. But if... So, you know, I think there will be enough players that that want to play where they they will be able to field full teams. So I'm not necessarily worried about that one. If that bubble thing doesn't get resolved with the Disney employees, then I don't think so because someone is going to get sick and it's all ruined, right? So that is really what it comes down to is if the players can can be and the players, staff, coaches, workers can be disciplined enough to have their eye on the prize, which is would be a championship, but also stay put, 
play the game that they love. That's that's really you know what it comes down to. So so staying in that bubble, I think they'll finish the season. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I, I do think this season gets done. My brother asked me this morning. He goes, do you think it's going to happen? And I said, I think they'll find a way. I think this bubble thing is very easy to figure out. Uh, I, first of all, it was a dumb idea in the first place to have it where people are coming and going. If you're going to have a bubble, it needs to be a bubble. And in this case, I think a very easy solution is having these workers go three or four days at a time, leaving, going to their families, and before they come back, they get tested. It's as simple as that, that you just have them get tested. And it may be a thing where a day before they're slated to start, they get tested and they have to stay at the hotel by themselves, quarantined, and then they start their shift the next day. I think it's going to end up being something like that. And that's a very easy solution to what may seem like a difficult difficult problem. And I also do think that enough players will want to play, like you said. Now mm-hmm. the question is, should they play? Because that's a completely different story. And I'll go first. I, I do think they should play. I think that there is a group of fans, a group of people out there that is larger than the other group where they really want to see basketball and it will make them feel good with how awful the situation is now to have something where everyone can come together rooting for a common cause. I think that is important enough in this time where it's worth going and playing. And if the players are okay playing and that they're taken care of, and I know that they're going to be safe, I'm okay with them playing. Yeah, I mean, you you said it, essentially. Um, I want basketball back. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, millions and millions and millions of people want it back. I think if they are safe and players feel that they are protected by Disney, by the NBA, by their teammates, everyone, that they should want to play, be able to play, and should play. Yeah, I I agree. Where are you writing now, by the way, before we get into some other uh, non-NBA stuff? Yeah, so same places. um, 213 Hoops, formerly Clippers Nation, or I'm sorry, Clips Nation, now 213 Hoops. Um, I still have my own blog, thisleague.net, which is more like NBA humor-based. And then um, also at the Step Back. Oh, I actually think I added the Step Back since the last pod. So the Step Back at Fansided. Um, Shout out Ian Levy. He's the man. There you go. Look at you. You're getting it done and you're getting involved in the footy. I mean, of, of yeah. course, we have the Premier League starting next Wednesday, which I'm thrilled about. I've gone head over heels into the soccer universe over the last couple of years. I actually play fantasy soccer on two different sites. I do it on fan tracks where they basically count up everything from key passes to goals, to assists, to tackles won. It's intense. It's intense. And then there's the Fantasy Premier League site, which is basically just goals and assists for the most part and clean sheets for defenders. But you're in the soccer world. What are you doing now? And how has that been impacted? Because I know that you are in the world of international soccer here in the States where you need the teams to come across, and that's most likely not going to happen. Right. Yeah. So um, I work at a company called Relevant Sports Group, and we have a tournament every summer called the International Champions Cup that started in 2013. And we usually bring anywhere from 10 to 18 um, of the top European clubs to America to play preseason friendlies. Um, I started the week of shutdown before anyone knew the shutdown was going to happen. Um, and since then, the tournament has been canceled, um, sadly. So we had to really pivot our focus to trying to be the, the European soccer voice in the U.S. or European football voice that, you know, people get mad if I say soccer. Yeah. Um, but so, I mean, yeah, we've been, you know, luckily soccer, especially internationally, has been able to come back safely. I think the Bundesliga is a great example for every sports league, even um, even the NBA. So and they've they've done traveling okay and they've you know really sequestered the players. There hasn't been many positive tests if at all. Um, so so they've they've done a good job. But yeah, I mean I'm focusing. And then today the Copa like Italian football starts. La Liga starts started yesterday. Um, so we're just uh, putting out a bunch of content. I run all the social media. I'm the I'm the managing editor of. Um, uh, like our website and all of the social media. So we're doing content related to, to it all. Yeah. It's Italy, Spain, England, you know, France's season got canceled, Germany. Um, we're, we're trying to, you know, really become that European voice um, here in America. 
That's awesome. And you bring up a good point about Bundesliga because we're, we really are seeing that this works. That mm-hmm. if you follow the rules in place and you take it seriously, this works. It really yep. does work. It's just a matter of how seriously do you take it. Unfortunately, here in the States, every state has really decided to go on their own. Whereas in other countries, it's been a universal system where they've all had to buy in. And that's the reason why Mm -hmm. Italy soccer is able to start. That's the reason why the Bundesliga started. Premier League, for the most part, has had their cases down. I think England is down to around 100 uh, or so per day. So they're down a lot as well. So it's completely different. But that being said, MLS is going to start. And and that's going to be in Florida as well. So yeah. it's, it's fascinating to see how that will uh, work out because you're going to have a lot of sports leagues. I mean, MLB is trying to come back um, if they can get their act together. The NFL, I, I still think that they're going to do whatever they can to play no matter what. And I, I think they'll have fans in the stadium. Speaking of, speaking of money, yeah, the yeah. NFL, they, they want their money. Yeah, they're I, grubbers. I, I think that they'll do whatever it takes to play. So yeah. with the Premier League coming back, I mean, what are you watching? For those of you who don't like soccer – It'll be a quick chat, I promise. But what are you watching <laughs> when it comes to the Premier League? Because I'm psyched about it. I know you are as well. Yeah, um, Prem is is going to be win by or won by Liverpool. They're up 25 points yeah. um, above Manchester City. So don't focus on the championship race because that's going to be over probably this weekend or maybe next. Mm. Um, I would focus on the race between spots three through about six or seven. Right, you have Leicester City at three, Chelsea at four, Manchester United at five. Um, so I really like those three teams and then Wolverhampton at six, um, those three teams are battling for champions league promotion, which is top. It'll be top five this year because Manchester city Mm -hmm. got suspended from it for two seasons, but really those three teams are fighting for their European lives, um, next season. Right. So, um, that's a really good battle to focus on then. And obviously the relegation battle is, is always fun. I think Aston Villa, Aston Villa, sorry, is down there. Um, and you know, my, my team being Stoke city who's in the championship now I'm, I'm used to relegation, which sucks. Um, but I'm, I'm a man United guy as well. Um, I kind of had to, you know, pick another team because Stoke sucks so bad. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, English, English football is, is always so fun to watch because it really is the top teams and top players. Um, and there's the, the golden boot race is tight with, um, Jamie Vardy of Leicester city and Obama Yang of Arsenal. Um, there, there is a lot to watch. And as someone who has been watching Bundesliga soccer come back really well and be competitive and, and have piped in crowd noise without fans, it, it has worked. And I hope the NBA actually looks to it and sees and, and, you know, maybe does some crowd noise, things like that. The virtual fans that La Liga did it's, it's worked. And I'm, I'm shocked that like you're, you're, you know, you mentioned that Germany as a country has been able to lock everything down and then open back up. And these teams are, they're traveling, they're taking yeah. flights, they're interacting with random people. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're still able to play and, and not get sick. Right. So the NBA in a bubble should be able to finish their season. And I really hope they look towards Germany and see, um, see how it's properly done. Yeah. They're stuck in Orlando. And like you said, everybody else is traveling. So it's totally different. And uh, everyone who hates on soccer, thinks it's boring or is passing, a soccer ball around. Uh, It's not the case. First of all, you know when it's going to start and you know when it's going to end. It's most likely going to be about an hour and 52 minutes from the first kick to when the final whistle is blown. That's basically what it is. Um, It's 90 minutes plus halftime. Then you probably get a couple minutes of added time, one or two minutes in the first half, and then about four or so in the second half. So you know what's going to start and it's going to end. Second of all, the promotion thing is something that is awesome to watch. I mean, the the top three teams, the championship, which is the level below, get promoted to the Premier League, and the bottom three teams of the Premier League get, get demoted to the championship. So that's fun to watch. And what's been crazier to see even this year, first of all, you mentioned the Manchester City thing. I think their their case is being heard next week to finalize if they are going to be banned for those two years. And if they are, then like you said, the number five spot jumps into Champions League. And then also you have these contracts where players are loaned out to other teams and it expires on July 1st. And so, for example, a team like Bournemouth, Ryan Fraser, who was their main guy last year, has already come out today and said he's not going to re-sign. So after July 1st, he's not yeah. playing for Bournemouth. And he thinks he's thinking ahead to greater pastures, and he doesn't want to get hurt. And so you have that this season as well, which adds a huge wrinkle to it, which uh, it should be fun. I'm really glad to see that Arlo White is going to be in the stadium for that Manchester City game. That's cool that they're yeah. allowing them inside the Etihad because I think it does add 
an element to the broadcast. And the broadcaster is there as someone that does do broadcasting. It's way harder to do in your office at home. I mean, there are pictures of Ian Dark doing it from his office. And you saw the tech people with their board in their offices doing it. It's complex. So I'm glad the broadcaster is going to be there. And it really should be a fun time. Yeah, it's going to be a really uh, fun end to the season. And then La Liga is super tight as well. Um, it's yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see kind of the end of, um, the end of the soccer season. And then it looks like champions league might be played, um, in Portugal after all in a bubble. So that now we should look to Bundesliga, the NBA, and then the, uh, champions league should probably look to the NBA to see how the bubble is done. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. Exactly. Well, it should be a fun, a uh, couple of months. And for the NBA, it's going to be a very fascinating watch to see what happens because July 30th is now supposed to be the start date of the NBA continued season. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Obviously, it does impact the Clippers since this is a season where they have a chance to win it all. They've got a top three odds to win it with the Lakers and the Bucks. So a big thank you, Chris, for joining us. Once again, your Twitter handle is underscore Chris Merch, and people can follow you at 213hoops and much, much more. So a big thanks for coming on the Hoopball Clippers podcast, Chris. Hey, thank you, Brandon. Really appreciate it. And that wraps things up. Next week, I think we'll be back with you. And I think we're talking crossover pod with Ethan Noroff of the Hoopball Lakers podcast. So until then, I'm Brandon Marcus saying so long and go Clips. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.